Harmony helps organizations and individuals better utilize their scarcest resource, our limited time and attention. How does Harmony do this? Let me take you through a quick tour of Harmony to show you that it is actually quite simple and easy to use Harmony and can even be fun, especially if you do it together in a group. To start, you need to register at www.harmonytoc.com. Let's start by opening Harmony. After logging in with your username and password received via email, you will see the SNT and Conflict Library navigation page. This is where you will select which SNTs and conflicts to work on. Important to note that although Harmony is a web app that can be used on any type of computer, tablet, or smartphone with an internet browser, you can also use it in offline mode for when you're not connected to the internet. And whether you are using it in online or offline mode, Harmony includes many safety mechanisms to ensure you never lose valuable changes or updates. So, let's start by creating our first S&T. A strategy and tactic tree is simply a method for defining and focusing our attention on the hierarchy of the critical changes we believe are necessary and sufficient to achieve a specific goal. Once the structure is complete, we then define each of the changes or blocks within an S&T further by defining its what for, how to, and why. You can create a new S&T by clicking on the Create S&T Tree button. You will be prompted to give your S&T a name and then you can add a title for the top level box or node, which represents the goal you or your organization is trying to reach. You can then begin by adding children. Child nodes are used to define the necessary conditions to reach the higher level objective. Each of these represent a change and their implementation priority is always left to right. In order to add the details of the what, how, and why for each change, double-click that node to modify its details. Step 1 is to ask what are you trying to achieve. This is the strategy or change objective. Step 2 is to ask how will you do it. This is the tactic or policy or process change. And Step 3, you answer the three whys related to the change. First why why this change is necessary. Second why, why this change is difficult but possible. Third why, why this level of detail might not be sufficient to ensure successful implementation. You can also attach or hyperlink files to specific change details to help explain the change to readers or viewers. You continue with adding nodes to your S&T until you and your team are satisfied that you've captured all the important changes and their implementation sequence needed to achieve the top-level goal. You can now view good examples of generic S&Ts within the Gold Drat and Community S&T library and can even drag and drop blocks from these into your own S&T and customize them for your environment. Next, let's go to the S&T Validation Module. This is where you get key stakeholders to help you validate or invalidate key assumptions in your S&T. You can do this by sharing your strategy and tactics with other users for their review and validation, or you can use Harmony to present it to them. To share an S&T, simply click the Share link next to the S&T name in your S&T library and add one or more users to share with. Provide their email addresses and decide if you want to grant them the ability to make changes to your S&T tree or just to view and comment. They will receive a notification via email to invite them to review the S&T you shared with them. Once a change has been validated, you can change its status to V for validated, which helps to quickly identify which changes still need to be validated. The NV for not validated ones. In this module, you can also get stakeholders to help you quantify and validate the financial impact of changes using the built-in financial model. Once you have shared your S&T tree and validated each change, the next step is to enter the planning stage. The S&T planning module is where you will define the resources needed to implement the proposed changes. 
You start by defining and then allocating resources, such as strategy owners, those accountable for achievement of a strategy, tactic managers, those responsible for implementing a tactic, and task participants, those helping the tactic managers. Then, with these team members, you estimate the time to achieve each strategy and time to implement each tactic. Once this is done, the Create Project Network button can be used to convert your S&T into a fully resourced and buffered project plan. Now that we have a plan, it's time to begin execution. Tactic managers can update the status of their tactics by clicking on the Tactic Planning icon. Here they can change the status of a tactic from not started to in progress and complete. Since it's so easy to end up working on too many things again at the same time, there is even a freeze option to help you prevent such bad multitasking. If the tactic is delayed for some reason, tactic managers can also update what they are waiting for and what their recovery plan is so it is visible to all stakeholders. Strategy owners can update the status of strategy achievement using the Strategy Planning button, where they can define measurements for each strategy and indicate when it is achieved. Go to the ST Execution module and you will be presented with a dashboard showing the status of your implementation on the ST tree. Each node is divided into two the top part showing the status of the strategy achievement and the bottom part showing the status of the tactic implementation of that change. If a tactic implementation or strategy achievement is delayed, it will become red, showing everyone exactly where their attention is most needed. An important part of implementing any change is the need for frequent audits to ensure the implementation stays on track and to check if your starting assumptions turned out to be correct or not. The ST Audit module allows you to perform such analysis by guiding users through four simple steps when our implementation gets stuck or we are not achieving our desired objectives. Step 1. Gap Analysis What is the undesirable effect or problem we are facing and why is it important to resolve? Step 2. Conflict Analysis when a problem has not been resolved yet, it normally means a stakeholder is stuck in some kind of change versus not change conflict. We can use Harmony to help define such conflicts by first defining the competitive actions of the change versus not change conflict and then the positive and negatives of the change versus the positive and negatives of not change. Step 3. Conflict Resolution now that we fully understand the conflict and views of all sides, Harmony guides you through four alternative ways to resolve the conflict. These four ways allow us to directly expose and challenge assumptions that block resolving the conflict in a way that gives us most of the positives with least negatives. Step 4. Yes, but... To enable stakeholders to help check and improve our new solution, Stakeholders can contribute by defining their yes buts and how to overcome these. Harmony then converts the outcomes of each of these four steps into a new planning or execution best practice presented in the ST node format that can be saved in your conflict library as a best practice or added to your ST as a new ST node. Our how-to guide, found on www.harmonytoc.com, provides a more detailed overview of the theory and process steps, as well as real-life examples in using each of the five Harmony modules.